be able to tell you and you're going, oh, I don't feel the head shakes. Oh, I'm a leader. Cool. What was oh, Cole Spencer? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I what are we going to do? Huh? What are we going to do? Hopefully, we think of. Okay. <laughs> One possible answer was just relax and go home. <laughs> Uh, so it is Pekin. We believe that not only elephant but also ions have uh, one properties, and we do want to see how uh, atoms, interatomic distance oscillations, convert uh, and look like in the uh, quantum point of view. In order to achieve this, we are looking for the eigenstates of the annihilation operator. And uh, we are setting it as eigenstate uh, problem in the basis step basis of eigenstates of Hamiltonian operator, right? Since we are doing it, 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 it looks like the eigenstates of annihilation operator and Eigenstates of Hamiltonian will not coincide. Right? So if two operators commute, their set of basis states coincide. If they don't commute, and uh, it was one of the homework assignments, commute annihilation of Hamiltonian. So it's not zero, therefore the answer will be uh, it will not coincide. By applying annihilation to the um, unknown state expressed as expansion coefficients, we got a recursion relation. We found that ex coefficients in the in the expansion expansion coefficients are connected. Like uh, each senior depends on on a junior, or how to say, higher order depends on on lower order. And uh, since it connects only nearest neighbors, we can believe that only the lowest one is independent parameter, and the rest are can be found based on it. So we are going just to practice this idea uh, once again and, and bring it closer to the conclusion. When we will be done with it, uh, next step will be possibility to, to see how the interatomic uh, Distance oscillate from quantum point of view. Any protests, questions? Good. I believe that most of us have uh, selected the subjects for presentation, but if you did not, uh, I think. Because of the of, of the schedule uh, trick is that I, I, I uh, missed because of the Veterans Day, you'll practically start on, on Wednesday, so you, you, you have still uh, a bit of time. And here is a screenshot of uh, what I got. Your your choices. So we do need. Choices from August and from uh, Adam, if he's still enrolled in the class, and from Tim. Um, if you are not comfortable uh, with the list of options, I can bring up more. So, uh, the one that I was not showing, and uh, if you look for last year presentations, was uh, for the decomposition of. Um, Yodomethane, like when molecule is breaking on the pieces uh, on uh, for the excitation. Whew. Okay, so let's go to actual watch uh, material. So here is the equation that uh, you ask, you permitted me to consider. So no one was protesting until, no, it is a wrong equation. I want to consider something else. So uh, an equation operator, 
uh, general expansion coefficient for uh, unknown wave function. So operator wave function, eigenvalue wave function. And we plug in the principle that the annihilation operator lowers the uh, excitation. So if certain coefficient like was, was one and all others were zero by applying annihilation, it will be depopulating, originally populated, and populating the one at lower, lower uh, rank. So here is what we were, what we were doing. So we did identify that this expression does contain brass and cats. And then through 10 minutes discussion, we did agree that uh, if the basis set is good, it must follow the property of So, if one, uh, what is the property for um, basis functions? If one multiplies function by itself and integrates, it was one. If the if it is the same function, and if one uh, takes one function from the basis and another one, zero. Yes. And how to call it? The main. Like, uh -huh. huh? Uh -huh. It's. It, Absolutely correct, but it's <laughs> very general. Like, uh, if we have a basis of size two, then it will be two dimensional vectors. When scalar product of the vectors is one, they are collinear. When scalar uh, product is zero, they are orthogonal. Yes, so it's orthogonality property in space with many dimensions. So, um, we are going to practice. To identify this orthogonality a where we can in order to get rid of the wave functions. So we need uh, some expression to find c sub k or c sub n, which are numbers. So we need to get rid of the wave functions, and here we so we do have k with n, drive with k. And uh, since we believe that those are good functions, their Brian cat product should be either zero or one. So by practicing this delta function and summation, they cancel each other. Now we have only one summation and uh, we replace, remove one index and keep uh, another one. And if we, uh, Look, do do uh, a little bit more manipulations and, and um, look at them in such way so that counting you use will start at the same point. Then we are getting this uh, lower line. So um, two series, two two summations, both go over the same summation index and both use the same base set. But coefficients in front of the same element are different. So here is uh, C sub n times unknown eigen w. And here we have C, uh, higher order C n plus one multiplied by square root of n plus one. So this equation is correct if. This element and this element are equal to each other, right? If the uh, coefficients in front of the same basis sets are, are equivalent. And then we do see we have a connection between C sub n and C sub n plus one, which we are going to practice. So, if we solve for 
uh, C of M plus one it will be equal to the lower order coefficients divided by square root of M plus one and multiplied by again again function. Any questions in the class or um, online? August Spencer Connor. So let me know if uh, there are questions. One, questions, two, no questions, three. And continue. Whew. So, if you start with the lowest C sub zero, we can just uh, escalate and, and get all uh, coefficients. Oh, I, I do not know if, if I want to speak about it. I want to believe that you agree and you believe and each of you can make the strategic plans already. So there is nothing, nothing special here. Well, since Friday there, I'll tell a couple of words. So the goal is to get observables and compare them with experiment. Uh, most of quantum calculation starts with uh, time independent general equation. So um, one can find solution of time independent general equation and get a basis against states and uh, eigenfunctions. Then solution of time dependent general equation is summation of eigenstates, phase accumulation factor, and expansion coefficient. In order to find expansion coefficients, one needs initial conditions that are overlapped with um, basis state in order to obtain expansion coefficients. And then, after one knows wave function, one can practice the sandwich or the sandwich of uh, A equals psi, A, psi, and get an observable. So, in some sense, what uh, we are doing now is finding an expansion coefficient that would allow to look at the dynamics. We have no doubts that we already know basis set. We have no doubts about energies of harmonic state. And uh, the effort that we are doing with second state of integration operator will give us a set of expansion coefficients, which I'm, I'm skipping some logical step that I'm going to discuss later, that appears in the interatomic bond which, uh, after we excited, after we irradiated this resonant infrared laser. So the system will come into the state where expansion coefficients are equivalent to what we are doing. And here is the and then we can find in observable. So here is, is the placement of our effort into the uh, overall context of the course. Make sense? Good. So I will be happy if I will arrive to this slide in uh, 30 minutes. And I will be extremely happy if I arrive to it in 10 minutes, then we can depart the room. So, um, it's too many equations, and I don't know from which should I start. But they are telling the same story. Well, probably let's look on the, on the yellow box. When we escalate the recursion relation, and recursion means connection of senior and junior, after we practice it many times, we'll get initial C naught in the power N, where N is how many times we went through the ladder. Therefore, expansion coefficients will have some power. 
n, and you have square root of n factorial, where factorial is how many times, like one times two times three times four, right? And we will we'll open it. The pre factor will come from, from the normalization. And then we will make a discussion that eigenvalue of annihilation operator is not no 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 I need to erase the last concept Start, starting over so after we will find eigenstates and then add this uh, phase accumulation, which will be specific for, for each eigenstate. Then there will be possibility to efficiently assume that we have the same functional form of the, uh, as, as, as we had an initial state, but the eigenstate will change in time in a cyclic form. I cannot say it better, but let's uh, check if uh, this sounds logical to you. If you want to say any objections or, or questions. Let me check with this uh, August Spencer phone. And by some reason, I do I do not hear the response. Uh, uh, well, let, me, let me check if I can. No, no. This up. Maybe, maybe just type if you were telling something. And if not, no one is typing, I assume that there are no questions. Whew, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Spencer. So there will be two answers. One, at time equals zero is what, what we are getting by uh, finding uh, eigenstate of annihilation at and later on we will add time dependence. And time dependence will not change functional form. It will just update the value of, of eigenvalue in, in this form. So it will be phase accumulation, not we will transfer time dependence from eigenstates to the expansion coefficient. And it will be uh, the time dependence in this specific case, it's not general, it will be possible to represent as if the parameter mu is time dependent. This all uh, remaining mass, mass is the same. I believe there is there is a better slide uh, when it is typed. And I would really enjoy to write, write it down. Uh, let's let's just look maybe on, on this type things and then uh, if needed I'll have to re redirect this uh, fun stuff. So the red box is the recursion relation. Did you hear the word uh, recursion before in the other classes? Mm -hmm. Did you hear it in the common uh, uh, sense? Something is recurring, happening again and again. Yeah. Right. So recurring. We are. Uh, applying the same rule for um, expansion coefficients at, at each order. So if you do know, see it not, 
then we can express C1 by plugging zero here and here, right? So we have C0 mu divided by square root of one equals C1, agree? Now we do have, now let's apply it once again. So C2 will be C1. Now we have here one plus one will be two, square root of two, and here we have mu. But we already know the uh, first order result for C1. We're going to plug it here, here. So it will be the mu over square root of two. And then this stuff instead of uh, C1, it will be C0 mu divided by square root of one. Make sense? And then we just uh, uh, practice multiplication. Mu times u mu squared, one times two, square root of two factorial c naught. So second coefficient is equal to the zero coefficient times some power. And uh, the thing that we are doing right now justifies our effort and your homework effort a uh, few homeworks ago in normalization of, of the eigenstate of Roman uh, This originates from this normalization. Later on, we, we are already close to get health benefits out of it. So let's do recursion once again. So for C3, I have an idea. I didn't announce it. This year, I will not do it. But next year, probably should invite classes in this to write it down because it seems doable. So, uh, we plug in n equals two into here. So if two, 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 then uh, we start from C two. We get C three, and here we get two plus one three, and mu again. But now we can. Uh, Remember that C2 is already known. And uh, we are using this prefactor and then plugging in the value for C2. And after we practice it, we get uh, third power of the eigenvalue divided by square root of one times two times three. And uh, there are no reasons to doubt that uh, this progression will, will keep repeating, right? So if we want to generalize this equation, so here is number three, here is number three. If you replace it with n, c sub n, u to the sum uh, to the n. And here under the square root, we will have product of all natural numbers, Starting from one ending with this n, which is abbreviated as factorial, as exclamation sign, right? So, expansion coefficient c sub n, mu times n divided by square root of n c. Is it sufficient or not? Do we have any? No, it's not sufficient. No, no it's, it's sufficient. We don't have any questions. Huh? It's sufficient. We don't have any questions. Well, I don't have any questions. <laughs> well, it, it, it's sufficient to like uh, for normal progress of the class, but it is not sufficient to have the uh, all questions answered to, to, to achieve the goals. Um, the technical goal that uh, we are solving. Uh, the technical goal that we are solving right now is to find eigen states of an information operator. We are doing good progress on this way. So we almost we found all we are looking for solution as a series of eigenstates with expansion coefficients, and we found all expansion coefficients as a uh, 
function as a, um, as a factor of zero square efficient. But we still do not know the zero square efficient. And we still do not know the eigenvalue. Uh, later on, we can relax rules for ourselves and agree that eigenvalue doesn't need to be known or just do mathematical trick of finding properties rather than answering what it is. But for C not, we need to do an additional effort. We need to find it. So what do you have any ideas how to uh, find uh, C sub zero, C naught? And I'm 200% sure that you know the answer. We just, we need to make, uh, to connect the circuits. Plug in values. Um, each quantum state can be processed into probability distribution by taking away function, not necessarily eigenstate, it can be any quantum state. The function can be converted into uh, absolute value squared, which will be probability distribution. What is the uh, result of integration of such probability distribution from uh, over all area of definition? Is it for one? No. One. Yeah. Because we, we are speaking about one particle. Yeah. It will be somewhere. Yeah. And mathematically, this, rest, uh, this uh, is what? What do you call it? Like orthogonality. Orthogonality, if you have two different functions and their scalar product is either zero or one. And if you have just one function and we know that absolute value square integrated gives one, uh, this word is typically used in uh, everyday language uh, as a way to answer the question, how are you? Function. You can say like, oh, I'm okay. Or some people can say, I'm normal. Mm -hmm. So what's in the word? Normal? Yes. So uh, if we function absolute value square integrated gives one, it is normal, okay. normalized. Okay. So we do need to um, normalize the eigenfunction. And uh, the through normalization, there are chances to get value of this signal. We can we can solve for it. And um, yeah. I hope I have better slide than this uh, other writing, but just in case. Wave function times self normalized should be one. If wave function is a set of expansion coefficients, then uh, normalization is graph of this wave function times schedule of this wave function, which will be rho by rho with uh, this little stars corresponding to uh, conjugation. But uh, other than that, it is the same C sub n coefficients, right? Rho by column of the And this uh, scalar product will be uh, C1 star times C1 plus C2 star times C2 and so, and so forth. So it is basically a scalar product of the function to itself. So uh, it should give length equals one. If it is if it is a normal function, a normal instance. So by adding together first coefficient absolute value square, second coefficient absolute value square, and so forth, we should give one. So this is an equation that we are going to practice. We already know all coefficients for our eigenstate of inhibition operator. C0, C1, C2, C3, right? And all of them are factors of signal. If we practice this normalization condition, it gives us a chance to solve for C0, to find what C0 is. Make sense? Yeah. 
So it's my favorite that I didn't type it in the good code of you. Cool. But the equations will work right. So here is our uh, normalization condition. We do a summation of uh, each coefficient absolute value square for coefficient uh, with star and without star subtle. And it must be equal one. So my next uh, little to go is to look back into uh, what we derived on a few slides before and plug in value of C sub n. If I do not trust my memory, I can print the slides. Or if there is a cheat sheet and then print my slides, I can just find it here. So C sub n is uh, C not mu eigenvalue in power n divided by square root of uh, n factorial. Right? And here the same is little stars. So uh, this uh, little stars are not negligible here because when we will practice this uh, eigenstate of intuition operator, some things, especially eigenvalue, could be complex. So I, I'm not going to replace it just by uh, square. It's better to remember that it can be complex. But other than that, one can uh, process this equation by multiplying mu star times this, uh, up power n mu without star power n as u star mu power n. And uh, in the denominator, we will have n factorial times n factorial squared. What is you know the how to simplify it. If you have like square root of x times x, x, yes, correct. And factorial. Exactly. Yes. Now, please um, consider to. Your inspirations and observations. What do you think by looking at this equation? You should get some uh, some ideas, or uh, you you may get some ideas. Uh, how to insert new slide? Control M. Would it work while presenting? Control V. Oh. It looks like it do it at something. Control Z. Control Z. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure it was. <laughs> well, there is a backup uh, backup version of slides, but let's. So we've got. U star mu times m and factorial summation over m. Do you have any any memories or any ideas about this expression? Taylor series. Super. I'm I'm happy. Taylor series of what? If we replace uh, this uh, new star mu as new variable and put summation n y to power n divided by n factorial. I'm making it very complicated. With x, it will be simple. <laughs> so it is uh, for n equals zero, it will be any variable in power n will be one. Then 
if n equals one, if you give y divided by one, then if you give y squared divided by two plus uh, y third divided by six plus y uh, n divided by n factorial. So it's Taylor series of order. There are not so many functions, not so many elementary functions. Just uh, if if you just try to make a uh, uh, guess and uh, just list uh, all functions that you know, like there is a, only a handful attempts. Just make a guess, list, list any functions you can remember. I basically know uh, only five functions. Yeah. Oh, someone is thinking her. Huh? Someone got it. <laughs> you. Uh, hopefully, no. correct. It's. I think you have to scroll over the green. Exponential. Yes. Thank you, August. Thank you. Uh, so. Uh, So yes, it is exponential. So when we make summation for this um, new star new power n divided by uh, n factorial, we can replace this box by e to the power new squared. Make sense? Focus plus one. Now we can we have an equation c star c naught star c naught times e to the power of mu squared equals one. We will be careful now in uh, introducing the new slides. So we do have one equals C not star C not E U absolute value square. So C not absolute value square equals E to the power minus you square, right? So minus in the exponential corresponds to division, divided by this number, right? And then if we need uh, C naught, we do not we do not know the C naught with precision up to a phase, so I will keep absolute value square without square, but then we need to take a square root of this uh, exponential. What do we do with argument of exponential if we need to, to, do, to take square root? Let's, let's try it. e to the power a times e to the power a equals e to the power 2a. Let's check what, what uh, uh, multiply the exponent uh, by one half. Yes, uh, August plus one. So 
you agree with this, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if we take uh, square root of that, which will be basically e to, e to the a, yes. it means we, we take the stuff here and divide, divide by two, right? Mm -hmm. So here we put e minus absolute value square u divided by two. This is a great success. As soon as we know eigenvalue, we can immediately find C naught and all other coefficients. So uh, I want to believe that on the next slides, I uh, literally plug in uh, C naught minus one half of mu squared. And if we plug everything in here, here is your mu to the power n square root of uh, n factorial. And now we do not have C naught. It is, uh, it's our former C naught. So basically, as soon as we know eigenvalue, we can find the wave function. And uh, time is going out in a few minutes, but I'll, I'll try to quickly say it and then probably start from the same side uh, on, on Monday. So if we want to bring in time dependence, it is nothing but e to the power minus uh, imaginary unit with energy times time for each eigenstate. So each eigenstate accumulates phase in its quantum phase, depending on its own energy. So if we replace time dependent n by this expression, we will get this stuff. So why it is n times omega rather than e sub n? is uh, energy of quantum state number n equals one half plus n times h bar omega, right? Now, since all states do have this one half times h bar omega, we can pull it out of brackets minus i omega over two. The h bar is canceled because in the definition of phase accumulation, we divide energy by h bar. And then we do have common factor, which will be the same for each state. And then for state number n, we have e minus i n omega t, which is uh, the same as e to the minus i omega t to the power n, right? And by the rules of uh, multiplication of, of, of exponents, we can uh, roll it into the final expression where the eigenvalue in power n and uh, time factor in power n can be merged Inside one breath. Okay, done. We uh, uh, looking forward to see you on Monday and have a nice weekend. You as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, everyone is uh, welcome to uh, this kind of in the park. Uh, over. Oh. Thank you.